Okay, so I'd like again to thank the organizers for organizing this event. Uh, so this, uh, I, uh, so yesterday I and Shomridhi were discussing that uh, yesterday like a lot of the talks were really good and so I spent a lot of time uh, <laughs> last night working on this uh, year. So hopefully I'll be able to explain uh, what the basic problem is about. Uh, okay, so basically the, it's a question of detecting a, a quantum particle. Uh, so it's a sort of a general question and uh, I'll try to explain what it's about. So this work, uh, I've been interested in this for the last five years and this is some old uh, people uh, with, I've been working on this problem and these are some old papers. And uh, Varun already talked about this uh, and uh, <coughs> this is some ongoing work with uh, Varun and Cedric Bernardin at I NISC. Okay, so <coughs> what is the basic question? So the basic problem uh, is very simple, like, uh, uh, so it's a question of time of arrival of a quantum particle. Okay, so let's say there's a, some electron inside this glass, and uh, then there's some screen, uh, which is like a detector, right? And I open this at some time, uh, yeah, and the electron, so it's in, the electron is in some way, has some wave function, uh, uh, which is localized inside the glass, and when I open it, uh, the wave function starts evolving, and I ask when there's a, the, the detector, this, the blackboard is a screen which detects electrons. Uh, when, do, when, when do I hear a click? Right? That's the basic question. <clears throat> now, if you think about it, I mean, uh, some of you think might think it's, uh, it sounds very trivial. Some of you might be a bit confused, maybe. But uh, okay, so I don't know how uh, like you're thinking. Uh, so okay, so, so, so the, there are many things you you'll probably think about. And we'll discuss uh, what are the possibilities of like uh, what answers uh, you can have. So, so this is the basic framework. Uh, I have some wave function which is initially localized, uh, like this electron, this glass, and I, uh, at time t equal to zero, it starts start spreading. Uh, if it's a non-relativistic system, of course, it spreads instantly everywhere. Uh, and uh, there's a, de a measuring detector uh, device here, and I ask when do I hear a click, right? So uh, since it's uh, quantum mechanics is a probabilistic thing, I have a wave function, then I say the, the, the probability I uh, detect something is like xi mod square. So there's a probabilistic, uh, it's already a probabilistic description. So it's plausible that uh, the, did, uh, the click that I'll hear uh, won't always happen at the same time, right? So, uh, so then I ask what is the probability that I detect it at some given time, at uh, let's say in a time interval t to t plus dt. So this is the question that we want to ask. And the related question is like after I, uh, uh, I mean, I release the particle, I mean, what is the pro probability that I never detect the uh, electron for some time t? Okay, so that's like the survival probability of the particle, survival from being detected. And uh, this is kind of, uh, if you think a bit, you can uh, see that this is true. <coughs> okay, so this is, seems to be a reasonable question to ask from the point of view of experiments. And the uh, question is like, if I just use the principles of quantum mechanics, how do I uh, uh, answer this question? Okay, so I just want to say that there are real experiments which uh, uh, precisely look at this sort of uh, questions. I and mean, people can do like uh, lots of uh, very beautiful experiments. So there are experiments where you take a cold, uh, uh, like a cold atom uh, system and uh, they're trapped in some uh, potential. Uh, and so they are kind of localized in uh, space and then you release the trap, and then the, let's say the wave function starts evolving. So there are experiments where they actually fall in under gravity, and then you have a detector which looks something like this. So in this case, it's a, it's a sheet of light, okay? And uh, when, the, uh, atom, when an atom arrives on this sheet, it, uh, you can detect its arrival, okay? And then you measure something called time of flight, uh, like what is the probability that it appear, uh, arrives at a certain time. And from this uh, uh, distribution, you can actually say something about the uh, state of the initial wave function. Okay, so these are their experiments where you can uh, ask this question. Okay, now uh, what is the, uh, uh, so this is actually, there's something called a polia problem in random box and Markov processes, where you basically ask like, uh, uh, again, the same question, uh, like uh, there you ask like, a, you have a, maybe a random walker, which starts, um, uh, 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 which starts from this uh, some point, and you ask what is the probability it will arrive at some uh, given location screen on the uh, at given location. Okay, so you can show in interesting things like in, if you are in a one-dimensional lattice, 
with probability one, you'll arrive uh, at, a given, at a certain point. If you're in two dimensions, you'll arrive at a certain point, but if you're in three dimensions, uh, the probability of error survival is, uh, is, uh, is uh, uh, finite. Okay, so uh, now this is uh, in quantum mechanics, uh, the, we have again a probabilistic distribution, but the, uh, the, uh, the wave function satisfies kind of a, like a diffusion equation, but mod squared is the probability distribution. And here we need to talk of uh, quantum measure, uh, like measurements. And the uh, important thing is that measurements change the state of a system, okay? Unlike classical systems where measurements you can do which don't affect the system, but quantum mechanics uh, systems, measurements change the state of the system, okay? So we'll basically use the following rules from quantum mechanics. Uh, the, when the electron starts, it starts evolving. It just follows unitary uh, evil dynamics. So it's just given by Schrodinger's equation. And then we have to use the measurement postulate, which says that uh, like uh, whatever we are measuring, it's an operator. And uh, you measure one of its eigenvalues. And after measurement, it's projected into that uh, state. Okay, so that's the, so there are two, uh, yeah, so that's the statement of the measurement, uh, yeah. Uh, it tells us the probability of like, uh, uh, when we make a measurement, uh, there are lots of outcomes and it tells us the probability of each outcome. And also it tells us what's the state of the system after the measurement. Okay, so using these rules, can we answer this particular question? Okay, so let me just say uh, what exactly it means, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, unitary evolution and projective measurements. So this is the initial state uh, and uh, it evolves for some time tau, right? Uh, so at some time, it's just unitarily evolved, this wave function evolves and it's given in some state like this. Now if I make a measurement, uh, which means that I ask, is the particle in this, uh, in this region? Has it arrived into this region, okay? Now there are two possibilities. I'll find that it is in this region, in which case the wave function will collapse to some state like this after, like which of course has to be normalized, but it collapses into this state, okay? But it's also possible that I don't find the particle in this region, in which case the state of the system actually change, <coughs> changes. It's projected out uh, uh, into a state like that, which doesn't have any support in this region, okay? So the important point is that even if I don't find the particle, the st it's in a different state, okay? So, uh, so this is the dynamics. Uh, I mean, I'm unitarily evolving and projecting, and so, uh, and then I want to ask, uh, uh, so the, now the question is like, uh, okay, in the first step, supposing I didn't detect the particle, then I, uh, so what can I say? Okay, so of course, like in my screen, uh, one question is like, can I make continuous measurements? Or can I make a sequence of, should I make a sequence of measurements? Okay, so uh, if, if you, I'm just using the rules of quantum mechanics, I have to do like uh, instantaneous and so sequential measure, measurements. Okay, so we'll consider the following uh, scheme. Uh, okay, so basically let me just say it in words uh, first. Uh, so I make a measurement and if I find the particle, then I know that the, uh, after the first measurement, the particle has arrived. Okay, so I stop the experiment. If I don't find it, then I let it evolve again for some time tau. It's again starts spreading a bit. So this wave function will spread a bit and then again I make a measurement. And uh, if, if uh, then it's possible that in the second measurement, I find the particle in this area. So I say that its arrival time is uh, after two uh, time steps. And I keep doing this, right? So, uh, so I uh, let the system evolve, conditioned on the fact that it's not measured, in which case, uh, and so I have this sequence of uh, unitary evolution followed by projections. Okay, so this one can do a very uh, like general framework. So let's uh, consider a quantum system in some finite dimensional Hilbert space, which where states are labeled by this set of states. And let's consider a general Hamiltonian. So this is the unitary dynamics. And uh, let's say I'm asking, uh, how much time? Okay. Uh, uh, right, so I'm asking, uh, has it arrived at some target state? Okay, so, uh, Okay, so then I define this projection operator A, uh, which is uh, just this uh, object. And so after the first, uh, uh, like after some time, let's say it's, it's in some state psi, what's the probability I find it in this state? Okay, so that's of course given by uh, this object and which is just expectation of this uh, projection operator, okay. So, uh, so if I don't find this particle, then uh, it's in this uh, other subspace 
and uh, the probability of non-detection is just expectation of this operator. Okay. So, uh, so what happens immediately after measurement? So, uh, if the particle is detected, then it's uh, projected into this state n, and it, I can write the state like this. If I don't detect it, it's given by this. Okay. So, after first measure measurement, uh, I uh, then uh, if I don't find the particle, then it's in this state, and I have to evolve it unitarily. Okay, so basically my dynamics consists of a sequence of unitary evolutions followed by projections into the space where I don't find the particle, okay. So, uh, okay, so therefore, I mean, uh, so it's uh, unitary followed by projection, again, unitary projection. And the effect, if, if I ask what's the state of the system after n such steps where I don't detect, then it's basically given by, uh, uh, like this, uh, by a new operator U tilde, uh, acted on the original state n times, where u tilde is a projection, unitary projection. Okay, so this is the dynamics, and then uh, one can show that the survival probability is uh, given by something like this. Okay, so this I won't prove. Uh, so the survival probability is just uh, so this uh, psi n, uh, this state that I get after n unitary plus uh, projections is a non uh, is not normalized. It's uh, you keep losing norm because uh, every time measure. And it's uh, ex uh, the norm of this object basically gives the survival probability. Okay, so now uh, this becomes a difficult problem because this object is uh, non-unitary and uh, it's finding its properties is quite, quite non-trivial. Okay, so this is just a proof. Okay, so now uh, I'll just tell you what are the main results that uh, with this dynamics, what are the uh, main results that you can find. Okay, so there's one very interesting question. Of course, like if you look at the physical example, if I'm measuring continuously, then it corresponds to taking this limit tau going to zero and uh, the number of measurements going to inf uh, infinite, so, that, so such that n into tau is constant, right? Uh, is some time t. Okay, so the, in, the in this limit of uh, continuous measurements, what you can show is that the survival probability is one, which means that you never detect the particle, okay? So this is uh, something called a Zeno's uh, paradox, and uh, there's a very beautiful paper by uh, Mistra and uh, ECG Sudarshan, uh, where they, were, they first uh, proposed this idea. Uh, actually, this was actually uh, originally uh, first uh, discussed by Alan Turing in 1954, and, but when he talked to physicists about this, I mean, somehow no one wanted to uh, uh, take him seriously. But uh, this, was, this is a really nice paper which uh, uh, discusses this in great detail. Okay, so uh, this is uh, uh, this uh, famous paper, uh, which is actually really beautiful, and if anyone is interested, they should really read this paper. I mean, uh, it's uh, mathematically rigorous, or also gives a lot of physical insight. Okay, so now, uh, of course, if you do this continuous time limit, you get this Zeno's paradox, and you and you never detect the particle, which seems very strange. But then uh, that's what happens. Now, what's uh, it's really interesting is that if you uh, look uh, look at a limit where you don't let the uh, interval between measurements going to zero, but take a small but finite uh, value. Okay, so this is something that we call uh, quasi Zeno dynamics, and here you'll eventually detect the particle. Uh, but, uh, uh, and then you can ask various, this, all these interesting questions, like when do you detect it, what is the distribution of times, uh, do you ever detect it, and so on, okay. So, and you can ask what does the state look like after, uh, in this, under this uh, interesting dynamics. Okay, so here we have a bunch of results, and one of them is uh, basically that you can uh, map this effective dynamics into a, uh, into a uh, uh, effective uh, individual dynamics with an effective non-Hermitian -Hamilton, uh, non -non Hamiltonian dynamics. Uh, and so that was one of the results. And this, uh, per this is a perturbative approach, but it seems to work extremely well uh, and reproduces some exact results. And recently, this is work which uh, Varun described is that we can understand this non-Hermitian Hamiltonian as a special uh, uh, scaling limit if you uh, deal with a particular uh, form of the interaction between the uh, system and the detector. Uh, okay, so maybe I'll just summarize uh, that uh, basically we try to understand this question of like when do we see, uh, when does a detector detect a particle that uh, starts, uh, that is evolving in some way. Uh, and uh, basically you find the surprising result that if you measure it continuously, you don't detect it, and that's the Zeno's paradox. 
but if you do this quasi zeno dynamics then you can get uh, quite interesting results and which are mathematically well described by some non hermitian hamiltonian which has a lot of interesting properties uh, okay maybe i'll just uh, leave with with uh, some quotes from uh, feynman uh, so if you really think about quantum mechanics i mean it seems uh, like uh, actually it's very hard to understand okay I mean, uh, and uh, but then there's a, this very famous quote by uh, David Marmin, uh, which is called the principle of SU uh, SWAC, uh, which means that you are supposed to shut up and calculate. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions? Uh, yeah. Sorry, so the, is there a limit where uh, this question of when you detect the particle first reduces to the some kind of a classical, uh, you know, first passage problem, you know, like, uh, I mean, uh, in the, in the, at least in the systems that uh, you no, guys so have So, for studied? example, we looked at this question on, a, on just a 1D uh, uh, lattice, infinite lattice. Hmm. Uh, if you do this, like, okay, so then, of course, uh, so let's say, uh, you start from some point and you ask uh, what is the uh, probability uh, that it arrives at some uh, some other point uh, after uh, after uh, after some time t okay so uh, on a, for the random walk i mean you with probability 1 you will arrive at any other place right but here with a finite probability you will just uh, wander away okay. so i mean because this is related to the fact that the quantum dynamics is kind of ballistic and so on Right, uh, so it's hard to get the classical limit. Uh, but of course, if you introduce environment and all, maybe uh, it starts behaving like a random walk. Okay, yeah. thanks. So, if the effective Hamiltonian is non-Hermitian, then how unitary evolution is? It's not unitary, right? Because it's unitary followed by projection, and projections are al already make it non-unitary. So that's why I'm saying this, this effective dynamics, which is which is uh, like uh, projection times a unitary, can be written as effectively uh, described by a non-Hermitian Hamiltonian. Let's thank the speaker once again. <laughs>